Hey guys, in this video we'll cover transforming mesh objects. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. In this lesson, let's discuss transforming objects. Now, no matter where you ended up last lesson, let's make sure we're on the same page. So what I'll want us to do is get back to the default cube. What we'll do is no matter what shape you have or what mesh you have, let's practice deleting and adding one more time. So make sure it's selected. I can tell mine is selected because I have that orange outline. But if you're not sure, you click once on the mesh to select it. Then to delete the mesh, hold down the shift key and press X. Then press enter to confirm the delete. Then to add a mesh, hold down shift and press the letter A. You'll see you have the add menu pop up. And let's come over to cube and press enter. If we're too zoomed in, I'll scroll the mouse wheel back just a bit and that'll be fine. Now in Blender, this cube mesh is also categorized as an object. And what I mean by that is all meshes are objects, but there are other things in Blender that are also called objects, such as if I zoom out that camera that we're gonna discuss down the line and that light, those are also object types in Blender. So the mesh is just another object type. And it's important to know that meshes are in a category of items called objects in Blender because you can transform objects. That means we can transform the mesh, but also down the road, we'll be able to use the same concepts to transform the camera or the light. And by transform, I mean that we can move the object's location, so we can move it around. We can rotate the object so that it's oriented differently. And we can scale the object to change its size. So let's practice moving, rotating, and scaling this cube mesh. Now, if you look over to the left of your 3D viewport, you have a few tool icons here. Up at the top, you notice that it's highlighted blue. We're already using the select tool and we're using a version of it that's called select box. If you hover down, there's something here that says cursor. This is about the 3D cursor location. We're not worried about those things just yet. Then the next three tools are the ones we're worried about. We have move, if you hover over that. Don't click it, just hover over it. We have rotate and then we have scale. There's a few other things here that we'll talk about later but move, rotate, and scale. Those are three tools that if we were to click on the icons, we could use them, but there's no need to because we can use our keyboard shortcuts. So go ahead and roll your mouse wheel forward to zoom in just a little bit to this cube. The cube needs to be pre-selected. So in this case, we know that it's selected because of that orange box around it. Then the shortcut for move is G. So press the G key on your keyboard. Think of it as G is for grab. Then move your cursor around. You don't need to click, it's already moving. You just move your cursor around and then click anywhere to set it down. Note that your view matters. So we have this kind of 45 degree angle bird's eye type view. And if we were to try to move it up in the air, it might be hard to tell, did we move it up in the air? Did it stay on the ground plane? But try this, go ahead and click down on your center mouse wheel to orbit and orbit up to where you're almost kind of in a side view then press G and move your cursor up and now you're kind of floating it up in the air and then click to let go of it. And then you can orbit around and you see now you've popped it up in the air. So the view that you have as you're moving, rotating or scaling can make a difference, especially when you're moving. So orbit around a bit again and press G and now try moving it around again. If you're in the middle of moving something and you realize, oh, I didn't mean to do that, you can get out of it by pressing the escape key on your keyboard. So go ahead and do that. Hit the escape key and it'll drop it right back to where you started. Now we can be way more accurate about how we move things later, but right now we're just getting the feel for the keyboard shortcut and what it does. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here, and for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube, and this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. 
If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and now, back to the lesson. So now let's talk about rotate. We still have the object pre-selected, same as with move, it needs to be pre-selected. Then the keyboard shortcut for rotate is the R key on your keyboard, so go ahead and press R, and then begin moving your mouse and you're rotating this object. Go ahead and click to set it down. You can orbit to change your view, and then try again, press R, and now you'll notice you're kind of rotating relative to your view here, and then click again to set it down. And just the same as with move, press R to begin rotating, and then in the middle of it, you decide, ah, I didn't mean to do that, hit the escape key on your keyboard, and you'll let it go back to exactly where it was before you started rotating. Now the last transformation tool that we're going to talk about is scale. And we're going through the same steps as we did with move and rotate. The first step, I accidentally zoomed in there, so I'll zoom back. The first step is make sure your object is pre-selected. Then press S for scale. And then move your mouse backwards and forwards, up and down, and you'll see that you're scaling the object. And then go ahead and click to end that scale. And as with the other tools, if you need to stop it while it's in progress, so go ahead and try this again, press S, begin scaling, and as you're scaling, go ahead and decide, hmm, I don't wanna do this, hit the escape key on your keyboard and it'll let go of it. Also, something to notice with both the rotate and the scale tools, so press S again for scale, and you notice that your scale seems to be about that orange dot there in the middle. Now, we're still not ready to talk too much about that orange dot, but that's the object's center or origin there. And you'll notice that the scaling is happening about that dot. There are going to be instances where you want the scaling to be happening about a different point on the object, and we will cover that in a future lesson. But just important that you see that relationship right now. Go ahead and hit the escape key on your keyboard. And the same would be true for rotate. So press R, and you notice that that rotation is happening about that orange dot. There might be times again where you want it to rotate about an outside corner or about some point that's to the outside of the object altogether. We'll cover that in a future lesson. Just important for you to see that relationship right now. Go ahead and hit the escape key on your keyboard. Now, if you finish doing a transformation and realize that you didn't want to do it, so it's too late to press the escape key, you can always undo that transformation you can either go up to your edit menu and pick the option for undo, or you'll notice there, just like in any other application, you can use the keyboard shortcut control Z to undo your last transformation. For now, I'll hit the escape key because I don't need to be in that menu. So that's just if you wanna undo the last one. But let's say that you realize you've been playing around here and you wanna undo or clear the transformations you've done. You can clear the transformations for either your move, your rotate, or your scale by holding down the Alt key and then pressing the letter that corresponds to what you wanna undo. So go ahead and hold down your Alt key and let's say we want to clear the transformations related to our move. So remember the shortcut for move was G, so holding down Alt and press G and it will be right back there to the center point there between the X and Y axes. Then let's say that we'd also like to clear our rotation transformations. Hold down that Alt key and press R. Now you notice it's no longer being rotated in a strange way. And then again, let's say we wanna clear the transformations for our scale tool. Go ahead and hold down Alt and press S and it will clear those transformations. Then you can let go of the Alt key. So that's a way to, even if you've done a hundred or a thousand transformations, that's a way to say, okay, I've played around with this enough. I'd like to go ahead and clear everything I've done from a rotation standpoint or a movement standpoint or a scaling standpoint. All right. One thing that we'll talk about right now about being a little bit more particular with how we move, scale, and rotate things is that we can lock the movement, rotation, or scale in the X, Y, and Z directions. So let's try that. Press G on your keyboard. That's now allowing you to move, and you can move freely anywhere. But then go ahead and press X 
and you're still in the middle of moving, but now you're locked in the X direction. Press Y, you're still in the middle of moving and you're locked in the Y direction. Press Z, and though we rarely see that blue axis, here's a time where it's gonna pop up to show you that you're moving in the Z direction. So there's still so much more to know about transformations that are really highly accurate, but this is a first step, just to know that you can lock these transformations, no matter what your view angle is, into the X, Y, and Z directions. Hit the escape key on your keyboard. Let's just quickly experiment with how that works with rotate and scale. So press R for the rotate tool, and you're rotating right now. Press X and your rotation is about the X axis. Press Y and now it shifts to the Y. Or press Z and now it's about the Z. And notice how that works when we're talking about rotating where that axis sort of becomes the central pivot point that you're rotating around. Hit escape on your keyboard and then press S for scale and you'll notice that scale, you might wonder, well, it's kind of scaling in the X, Y, and Z direction. So what would that do for us? Well, let's try it. Press X, and now you can see it's constraining the scale on the Y and the Z so that you're only scaling it up along the X. Press Y, and you might expect that it will only go along the Y. Or press Z, and now it's only scaling about the Z axis then press the escape key on your keyboard. Okay, so these are the basics of transformation. Moving, scaling, and rotating. Being able to escape when you're in the middle of something. Undo if you've done one thing that you don't like or clearing all your transformations. And then just starting to tiptoe into being a little bit more accurate with locking things in the X, Y, and Z directions. With just these basic things and knowing how to add different types of meshes, you're already starting to get to a point where you can create some primitive but recognizable things. And because you're at that point, it's the best time to challenge you. So we're done with this lesson. And in the next lesson, I'm going to issue you a challenge and see if you can create some very basic things in Blender using the skills you've learned so far. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.